Welcome to another reaction video of Star Citizen Live Q&A. We're gonna watch um, today's episode actually. Uh, this was three hours ago and is Invictus Vehicle gameplay. Uh, it's one hour and five minutes, so enjoy the ride and we're gonna react to this. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Live, our Invictus All Vehicles gameplay Q&A. I'm your host, uh, Jared Huckabee, and joining us on the show this week are a few uh, esteemed members from the various uh, gameplay feature teams uh, throughout Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development that work on features related to the spaceships uh, and vehicles. Um, it's always hard. We used to just say ships, and then we like we started making more ground vehicles, and I'm like, no, you got to call it vehicles now, not just oh, spaceships. Oh, nice. Don't spaceships cool, eh? Just dismiss all the great work of ground vehicles. Congratulations on the gifted ship. Already lost in the show. Before we get started... I uh, wanted to uh, call out a, a couple things uh, for folks who were questioning some, some of the questions and some of the discussion from last week's show and stuff. Um, a lot of the questions that are submitted into our threads when we pull questions are things that obviously people want to see, people want to know about, people are anxiously waiting for. It doesn't mean they're actually in active development. If a thing is not in what we call active development, which is where a person is literally like their tasks this week are to work on a thing. It's been three There's hours, Daz. no new information to give. Um, folks who have followed the project for any uh, long period of time will tell you that in the earlier days when we were still all figuring out uh, what Star Citizen was and figuring out what weekly content was and stuff, we were sometimes quite uh, vociferous uh, and loquacious uh, with our with our verbiage, and uh, now, I'm just, now I'm just reading it for the source. Uh, basically, we would just talk pie in the sky, maybe we'll do this, and maybe we'll do this and stuff, and it, sometimes it can set expectations that are unfair uh, to set in people. So over the last few years, uh, you've probably noticed that we're, we hold things a little closer to our vest. If a thing is not in active development, we try not to talk about it too much because there's just too much about game development that can change between now and the moment when we actually start to work on it. So for that reason, I'm sure you've noticed in our storytelling, ISC, SEL, that we tend to talk more about things that are coming in the next three to six months as opposed to things that are coming in the next year to two years and stuff like this. So for in the question thread, there were a lot of questions like, what about personal VIP transport and, and stuff like this, which is not currently in active development? Or what about, F, uh, what about medical gameplay, which is, well, it does... In yeah, I remember, <laughs> it's really funny because I remember when they, they had their roadmap from like up to like two years or whatever and they used to talk about things in the future, 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 future and then people started getting super mad. People started saying like, yeah, you're just like giving us fake promises and you're saying this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then like whenever, like on the roadmap, you could see like, Oh, so in the month of dispatch, we're going to have this and this and this and this and this. And then CIG will release a patch and it didn't have like any of that stuff. And people will get super mad. They will get super, super mad. Uh, so they recently stopped doing that. I think like a year ago, uh, they started changing. They removed their roadmap and they started changing the way they do things. Um, because they were getting a lot of backfire from people. Just like, hey, you were you promised us this in 3.21 and you didn't do it and blah, blah, blah. So they kind of like changed the way they do things now to where they try to just speak about what they are, like what they are releasing in the next three months or six Involve months. Involve vehicles uh, to a certain extent is far more an FPS related feature than it is a, a, a spaceship feature. Uh, we're going to focus the show as we always try to do, on the stuff that is currently in active development and the features that folks are yeah. aware of and can play with right now. Things like salvaging and mining and combat. The thing is CIG is super transparent and that has caused them a lot of issues, I think, uh, where they stopped doing it. And stuff like that. Um, a good example of this, uh, there was a question about uh, bounty hunting V2. For instance, there was, a, there was a big question was voted up about how, how's Bounty Hunting V2 running along. Bounty Hunting V2 is actually not currently in active development. It's been backburned a bit because we've determined that there are other prerequisite features 
that are necessary to make it work. Things like uh, restraints, a restraint system, uh, a quantum tracking, the ability to track people through quantum travel. Uh, FPS and ship scanning, we all know that needs uh, additional work, and basically the law and security refactor. So when those things come online and those things are developed, then the eye of development Sauron will turn back to Bounty Hunt B2. It's like this. So just a great example of how sometimes a thing is in active development, sometimes it becomes not in active development. And just a little bit of me at the top of the show wanting to discuss why we sometimes ask certain... I mean, the truth is you can make everyone happy. That's the sad truth. If you try to make everyone happy, you're going to go crazy. Questions and why sometimes we <coughs> don't ask certain questions. If we're not asking it and we're not talking about it, you can generally assume that it's not something that's currently in active Bless development. You. Thank you. And we'll get to those topics when we get closer to that time. Just a little bit for me. Uh, all right. So with that, let's start the show proper. Uh, we have uh, four uh, beautiful people, some of my favorite people, and Elliot Maltby joining us on the show this week. So let's get to meeting them. Uh, sorry, just had to... Uh, you know, Elliot, I'm sorry, you took the hit there, so we're going to start with you. Elliot, hi, say hi. Tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Elliot Maltby, uh, and I am the uh, lead mission designer on the mission design team. So I make all those missions that work perfectly for you, all of you. <laughs> And at no point do you sit in a corner during Beacon Belgium and just scroll through teams finding out what this mission is broken, that mission is broken. And... I, I don't get a rest. No. Just everyone <laughs> constantly, hey, you know, your mission's broken. It's like, yep, I built it. I know it's broken. I do it on purpose. Yep. Uh, Yogi, tell everybody who you are, what you do for Star Citizen. Uh, unmute yourself. Tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. <laughs> I was muted. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Yogi. I'm a principal vehicle pro programmer. Sorry. Um, and I deal mostly with space combat and the flight experience. Um, Richard and Torsten. Um, and yeah, that's what I that's what I do. So I do coding and designy things. Uh, handle stuff like uh, general flight model development, ESP, and stuff like that. So. Uh, all these complaints when something is broken usually also go to me. <laughs> Not mission related though. Fair enough. I like that. The link between Richard and Thorsten. So let's go to Richard. Rich, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Um, yeah, so I'm basically Richard Towler and I'm <clears throat> um, and I'm the lead designer on the vehicle experience um, side. So <clears throat> it's balance, um, it's gameplay with vehicles and basically working with Yogi and anyone else involved for the you know, the kind of general vehicle experience to <laughs> Make the vehicle gameplay good in Star Citizen. And last but certainly not least, Torsten, tell everybody who you are, what you do for Star Citizen. Hello, I'm Torsten. I'm the systems designer and I complain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. And of course, as you've seen, um, all of our uh, major designers and programmers live in the void. Uh, which, and we're so glad that you can join us from the void. Uh, this week to take questions. So uh, just two top shelf questions before we get into the, all the questions from the from the backers this week. Um, Yogi and Rich, Master Modes is finally this this big thing. You work on a lot of things, but Master Modes, this, this uh, project of yours is finally out in the wild with 323. Uh, how's that been? Go how's that? How's that going? How, how's that make you feel? You, are, are you done? Are we walking away from it? Is this the last thing? Or what's what happened here? How happy are we? Well, um, so I, I posted about my feelings concerning Master Mods uh, about a couple of weeks ago in Spectrum. Um, so in general, I'm very happy with the progress and what we achieved because the, um, the swapping to the Master Mode tech uh, meant that we had to update all the ships all in one bulk. So um, we could not really um, uh, stretch this out to multiple releases because our uh, our data system is not able to have like uh, two different tuning values or two different ways of uh, keeping tuning ships balanced um, at the same time. So we had to squish all the ships and just to be clear, we have about 140 different ship records in the game. Uh, so we had to update them all and take the other related tech from from Squadron, like the new aiming system, the ways so how the weapons work, the gimbaling system, and so on, plus uh, part of the UI updates, and squish this all into 323. Now we knew from we, we we knew before that this was like a pretty tough ask to do, 
um, because it's just a lot of work. Um, so overall, I'm really happy with the with the progress. Of course, there's like there's a couple of like, let's say, balance issues. There's a couple of balance offenders, of course. Yogi not happy with master modes at the moment. He made a post of what he hates about it right now. Or really, <laughs> he's like, we're recording for YouTube. Say you're happy. S say you're happy. I mean. <laughs> man i have seen like i'm honestly getting i don't even want to try master mods because i'm so tired of everyone just not happy of everyone just like complaining of course right um but it was kind of like no no yeah well <laughs> There's no, like, we don't need to. <laughs> we don't need to say it's perfect. Like, we we never said it's going to be perfect on this release, right? But it's it, it builds a far better foundation from which we can iterate faster going forward. Um, so beyond three two three. What about you, Rich? Uh, yeah, that's basically where we're at. You know, it's about moving towards the better foundation for the future of the game. Um, so it's been really cool to get here. Um, but for us, it's just a start of this. But it's been a really cool journey. I mean, this this journey started for us. Wow, like three years ago, Yogi, I think. It was, yeah, it's about three years ago, maybe more than that now. Years. Yeah, I, lo I lost track of yeah. time. Really. You know, so we got together and, we, and you know, we looked at statuses and we went, right, what do we need to do you know, to make the combat experience good, but also the, the general flight experience good? And we came up with lots of things, and Master Words was kind of one of the ones that evolved kind of as the prominent feature that we were working on. And it's involved so many teams and so much feedback from you know all across the studio. So it's been an effort, you know, not just myself and Yogi, but lots of different teams, you know, and lots of different people, you know, that are worked on this over the time, um, you know, that I've been here. So it's been really good to see it out there. It's been a big push at last minute because as, you know, Yogi said, we've got so many ships and every single one of them had to be updated to make this work. So, you know, there's a couple of things, you know, that we didn't catch probably, um, but that was expected given how many records have changed in the game. Um, but we believe it's a much better foundation. And, and, you know, we're excited for the feedback that's coming, you know, as it's coming in, you know, and also, you know, for the future as well, because it's going to evolve massively, you know, over the next few releases. And of course, we'll have more questions about master modes when we get to the combat section of today's Q&A. Um, before we jump into it, Torsten, uh, Yogi and Rich just had their big, uh, their, 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 their big child uh, pushed out in the world. You're up next with engineering and 4.0. How are you feeling about your work? Uh, pretty excited, to be honest. So um, we, with all the work that we, we now are starting to put in, and next week we will... I still haven't seen engineering. Does it work now? I, like, I wanted to try it when the patch first came out and people said it was broken. We'll reach a big milestone where we will just force everyone to use resource network in uh, in in our game dev uh, branch. So, um, yeah, will be, will be quite exciting times going forward. Okay. So, and of course, we'll, we'll have some more questions about engineering later on the show. Let's jump into the backer questions. We've separated the questions into a couple different sections for a couple different gameplay features and stuff. We're going to start with uh, an oldie, uh, refueling. Uh, refueling and rearming. We'll combine the two there. Uh, this question uh, from the community simply says, how is rearming out in the field supposed to work? If we land our fighter in a, Polar in a Polaris, for instance, how do we restock? So <clears throat> if, you, if you run ballistic ammunition, uh, we will allow you to restock the ballistic ammunition. And the way that it will work is you will buy um, ammunition containers that then you will use to refill the pool of the ships that you either landed or if you even have uh, like a, a capital ship or a bigger ship, uh, you will be able to put those boxes with the ammunition inside. Uh, right now it's a dedicated slot, but it's, it's subject to change and then it will basically drag the, the ammunition out of it and then uh, basically put it to the pool. Uh, one one change that will come with that is um, that... I don't know who makes or who edits these videos, uh, but I feel like he could put the same background on everyone instead of just doing black. Because black is kind of boring oh wait this is a live stream but even as a live stream 
Well, no, it depends. Never mind. This is live. I mean, but they could ed edit a little for you. No, okay, never mind. Don't mind me. That people... So this is something... They could edit this for YouTube because this went out today and it got posted today for YouTube. They could have like a cool background. I don't know. Oh, okay, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it's probably just Zoom, so I think whatever. that is coming sooner than later, which is we will unify the, the ammunition size. And that's just for the fact that we don't want to have you uh, bespoke <laughs> ammunition, for example, for your bearing Gatling. But we want you to share the ammunition between different weapons that, that share the same size of ammunition. For example, a size 3 Gatling uses the same round size as a size 2 repeater, <laughs> and it uses the same Please. size as a size 1 repeater, so you can plan your your load out accordingly if you just want to buy one type of ammunition for your ship and what about for things like uh, bigger things like missiles and torpedoes yeah that's yeah, we already <laughs> started with that right so the the um, tractor beam detach attach was the first step already for that so the the following steps are then having these uh, i think i don't know if it was ever put out the images of of the um, I, I might be leaking something now but uh, the, the, there's <laughs> the, like we had those missile racks uh, that the mo mobile missile racks that you could push to into into vehicles so these these might also see the the, the light of day at some point yeah no no I, I don't i don't i don't remember if we've shown those other but that, that's been an idea that's been floating around development long enough that we can share that basically the idea of storing missile racks inside your vehicles that you can then when the ship lands and something like the place you basically go and reload and stuff like this um there's also so um, I have no idea if it's out yet or not, but uh, uh, Tyler will have a post on uh, Spectrum uh, later today concerning some of the weapons for the Retaliator and some of the missile counts for the, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, Firebird. So I don't know what the details are specifically, uh, but check that out. There's, uh, there's some improvements coming in a 323-1A patch or two. I, I, again, the specifics elude me right now, but there's a... But I know that the Firebird is getting more missiles than it currently has, and the Retaliator is getting bigger guns, I think. So look, look, look out for that. Uh, if that hasn't posted on Spectrum yet, it'll post later. Uh, and then trust him for the details, not me. Um, are we likely to see missions for refueling? Um, yeah, it, it, it's something, it's something <laughs> we want to do. Um, but it's... It's not. It's not as. He's like dot dot dot. Uh, sure. It's it's not a simple thing to do. There's there's a lot of like downstream dependencies that we have to rely on you for it. You can see the dots. Uh, and there's a lot of edge cases. <laughs> you know, brain. if we're doing refueling and then you board the ship and you know kill the AI pilot and you've just got a free ship because you sat there like without any fuel. Um, you know, these are sort of things we need to catch and protect against. We also need like, like an, a crazy amount of feedback for the player so that you know that they're like right i'm nearly full or you know hey i need some help or you know maybe maybe we we do like hey here's the first version it's just refueling but then we have refueling but you get pirated you know by some ai pirates you know the the ai needs to be able to react and communicate with you as the player and and then sort of like tell you about the situation that's currently happening so you can sort of adapt appropriately um so long story short yes just probably not yet because we need a few more things What'd you do to Araka? Araka in chat says, please don't let this guy do missions. You got, time, huh? you got timed out by Knight Rider, but. Go on, Knight Rider. You, you making friends out there, Elliot? Always. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves me. Um, uh, while we're sitting here talking about missions, let's cool. talk about mining missions. Uh, so, refueling, obviously, something we want to do and stuff. It, it's, uh, but what about uh, missions related to, related to mining? Wow, the ability to speak. Here, there it is. What about mining missions? Mining missions, yes. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we want them and we're going to have our first versions of them coming in hopefully soon uh, in the form of resource gathering. Uh, but these are going to be the first iteration, which we kind of call like open resource gathering. And this is the idea that like a mining outpost will go, I want, you know, a thousand SCU of iron. And then that that's all they say. And then you have to go out and collect it, you know, or I, I want a thousand SCU of quantanium. And, and you as a player can go mine it and transport it. Or if you could purchase it from another player or a store, you do that. Or you can pirate people for it and bring it in because they, they don't, 
care where you've got it from they just need that resource um so that'll be kind of like the idea of the first versions and then later down the line we might get more specific specific with uh sort of resources that we want where we're, we're like we want exactly this you know these mining things from this area because we have bought the sort of uh land claim there for those rocks and then there's there's all that talk about uh, we've talked before about how the mission system uh, could potentially plug into like quant uh, a quantum and stuff and when a uh, when a resource is needed you know for a particular station or something it could generate a mission you know for that stuff yeah yeah exactly like this is this is uh, we're, it's static because we have to pre-set up all of the data but the idea is that it's all there, so when the sort of quanta, uh, quanta star sim, whatever it's called, system comes and hooks in, it'll just take over and start generating these on its own and and balancing these based on like the needs of the universe, and you know it will react to what players are doing. And that's not to say that missions are the only way. Like, like when when these missions come online and stuff, and as there, there are more salvage missions and more mining missions, that's not the only way to make a living with those professions that's just th those are introductory things to draw people to the profession for the first time that maybe they hadn't pre considered before and to supplement uh, a little more directed uh, initiatives to just the open sandbox stuff that you'll always be able to do yeah it's it's something that me and thorsten have, have talked about a few times when it came to uh when thorsten first released uh salvaging you know hole scraping um the gameplay came out and then the missions were away yeah, I don't know why the HP for big ships is slow. Like, it's it's crazy that a Gladius light fighter can kill a hammerhead. It's honestly, <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. Which I think they are slowly changing. Um, but it's may maybe it's because we don't have enough big ships right now to have big battles. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like big ships should be way, 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 way harder to kill, you know? A way to help expose it to new people so they could see the gameplay and find mm -hmm. the things uh, a bit quicker. So it's a nice way to sort of show you to the world and then let the systemic nature of the universe and let the, you know, the, the actual cost of doing mm -hmm. it yourself without a mission come into play when you get more advanced at it. Um... I'm going to do one more mission question since we just happen to be on here. Uh, are there plans uh, for more robust missions that uh, cross disciplines? Uh, for instance, in here it says uh, it starts off as a mining job, then turns into a repair job so that you can then do a salvage job and then transport this, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Uh, kind of, kind of, I guess the, I, I guess the uh, overdrive was, was the first kind of beginnings of that multidiscipline kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely want multidiscipline things. Um, the What we're doing is we're building, because obviously, as I might have mentioned a few times, I build missions modularly. Um, so we build a lo load of base sort of modules. So with our resource gathering and our salvage things, the idea is that when we get enough of them, we'll start stitching bits of them together. So you might have a mission where you've got to take out a bounty and then you've got to hull scrape him and then maybe you've got to steal his component. Then you've got to, like someone wants that component. So you get another objective, like deliver that component to this person. And we plan to have missions that take you through multiple bits of gameplay, um, but all in one mission. Um, but Right now, our focus is creating the baseline of all sort of generic type missions that we can think of. So the idea of that is that if we build them, they can then scale out to, you know, all the systems that we have planned. And it's, it's easier to get a widespread of content before we start building into our bespoke sort of things. Okay. And while we're still talking... It will be cool that after Squadron comes out that they create kind of like a story, not not exactly like single player story, single uh, like story game, uh, but on Star Citizen, have something like Star Wars The Old Republic. Star Wars The Old Republic has so many missions and so much content. I feel like if they kind of introduce some of the characters from Squadron once it's out and, and kind of do like, a bit of different missions, but multiplayer that integrates multiplayer. I feel like that will draw a lot of players in. Like kind of following a story where you have to visit like all these places in the verse, you know, because that's what Star Wars The Old Republic does. Like 
you have like a bunch of missions in one place and then they send you to another and then you have a bunch of missions in one place and they send you to another and it's not like you have to quantum like over and over from like oh we have a mission in microtech this time oh we have to go now to yella because we have another mission there i feel like that, that that's gonna get tiring i am kind of tired of of having missions where you have to quantum like for 15 minutes do like a two minute mission and then come back another 15 minutes to do another two minute mission i feel like they should focus like like kind of like star wars your republic does it really well i think fashion stuff uh torsten maybe um any thoughts about making power plants burn fuel uh, with abandoned ships keeping their shields forever? This would be a nice way to address that for salvaging and the like. Uh, <clears throat> yes, power plants will consume fuel in the future. So it's not, um, mm -hmm. so it's, it has been a plan for quite some time already. And we are now looking into one, when is the perfect time actually to release, release it. It's not uh, with 4.0, so it's not with the initial release of uh, the resource network, but uh, it will come uh, at a later point then. And uh, the goal there is then that the power plants will consume hydrogen fuel. So it's used for the thrusters and the power plants. And uh, yeah, the, the, the reason is because uh, power generators right now create energy out of thin air. And especially when we go forward to base building, um, we, we can't. Do that anymore so we need a we need a resource that is actually consumed over time and the benefit is then in that scenario that is described in that question is once your your fuel runs out once your battery is depleted uh, all the systems on that ship will then s slowly die and uh, yeah you you will be able to uh, enter that ship without any shields anymore but also without any life support nice okay um, let's move on to combat. We, we have quite a few combat-related questions here. Uh, <laughs> I'll just start off with the big one. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the opening, we'll often take a bunch of questions and just combine them and stuff. Uh, this was really about seven different questions. I'm going to combine into one here. Is balance possible? Like you, you mentioned 140 ship records. For, for master modes. Is this a pipe dream? Is balance, is balance actually an attainable thing? It's not a pipe dream at all. Um, <laughs> so yes, we had 140 records and we have uh, we did a very quick uh, weapon tuning pass and uh, a little bit of a health pass for some components and ships, but um, we're also getting a huge amount of data from the players actually playing that stuff. Um, internally, when we develop stuff, it's sometimes hard to judge whether or not we reach the right um, balance because we have a... Are they getting the uh, players are still running data? I'm wondering. Uh, ...vast array of um, uh, ships and, and items and all that. But when you watch player playing it, then you get an idea what's happening. Um, that said, the front pass that we have on the balance should not be treated as a oh, this is now the final product thing. Uh, it's really just a stepping stone because it just sets a little bit the stage for the vastly bigger changes that are coming to, um, in terms of like, uh, to, to 4.0 and I beyond. I finished my food. Um, because there will be new gameplay loops and so on. Um, I think a huge step we took right now is actually that we set our intentions very straight, right? So we know exactly what we want to achieve. And now yeah, we actually look for, for the data sets inside mm -hmm. like what, what players are ex actually experiencing mm -hmm. right now and we use this these observations to improve the balance even more what you got rich yeah on the overall question is balance even possible do we want balance as in do we want everything to be balanced because we because the kind of nature of balance is the imbalance imbalance that makes sense for me um <laughs> because we've got to capture all the unique characteristics of the ships and that throws them off in all different kind, you know, all kind of different kind of directions. And we've got to capture that balance to make sure that within the game context, the ship fits within the game, but every ship needs to feel different and offer different things and have different character to them. So it's, 
that's kind of the complex nature of balance. And then we have to balance the game with the other features that affect flight, you know? So, you know, basically, as Jürgen said, this is the starting point of the rebalance of the game. But then, you know, with 4.0, it's going to evolve massively, you know, with the engineering gameplay. It's going to have a significant impact on how the ships are in the game. So we're going to kind of reset again there. And then we're going to, again, we're going to look at the data to see if we're delivering the gameplay we intend. So it's a juggling act, you know, and it doesn't really ever end with a game like Star Citizen because the game, it's a live product. You know, it's out there, it's evolving. We're adding features, we're changing things all the time. So, you know, from my side, the balance is, yeah, it's not something that will ever be finished. It's an evolving thing. You know, it's a living, breathing thing that exists in the game currently and will carry on to evolve. And Which is true for any MMO, any on on mm. online game, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we were talking, uh, I, I, I can't, I won't be de begin to try to pronounce his name. The, the main guy in charge of Smash uh, uh, had, a, had an interview this week or last week where he, where he, he said he released, he, he talked about their internal numbers about how the most successful fighter in all of Smash Brothers had like a 51% win rate and the least success, successful fighter had a 46% win rate. So it was really only about a 5% difference uh, uh, there. And, uh, and uh, Torsten, you mentioned that he had a... Wait, what, what me mechanic are you saying it's abusable? 45? Because jousting was abusable, which now they changed it to like the nav mode. People in combat quickly changed to nav mode and they joust. So it's basically the same thing, which is they are, they are still abusing the running away. A YouTube channel uh, that we're talking to, where he talks about design and stuff. Yeah, it's basically he, he talked about... 45? What? Like, 45 was fun. It was like super positioning fighting, which was super fun for me. Master modes is hella boring to me. Like, just like trying to nose to nose and I don't know, it's really boring to me. Like, if, if you have a fully balanced game, it's basically everything is average and average is boring generally. So you always tend to do, if you do balancing, there's always a peak up or a peak down. So it's more interesting for, for players. Yeah. Worth watching, by the way. Yeah, it, 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 it was like the best 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 characters were 51, the worst characters were 45, Elliot Malby was like 38. Um, I swear to God, you can't even pronounce his name. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this guy built my childhood. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I think the, the moral of that story is Elliot is bad and balance is an ongoing thing that never ends, but you never want to make it too homogenous. There will always be some level of intentional imbalance because like life, that's what makes it enjoyable and interesting. Um, we couldn't talk much about the Bounty Hunting V2 thing, but a lot of that that's ship related is has to do with non-lethal damage. So let's talk about non-lethal damage. Can you give us an update on things like EMP, distortion, and overall ship disabling? Anything that anything involved in not destroying another ship? Torsten, maybe you take that because that's highly related <laughs> to a resource network. So <laughs> I thought you wanted to talk about like EMP and stuff, but okay. Um, no, I mean it's like it's it's similar. So big the big question, uh, uh, the big picture hasn't really changed, but there will be some specific details with like software that Torsten will talk about in two seconds. Now. Yeah. So so the, we we still keep all the 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 uh, weapon counters that is uh, distortion that is EMP and stuff like that where you can. Uh, uh, but like for EMP, you first have to bring the shield down. So there's some work that comes with it in front. Uh, for distortion, uh, we already mentioned it. I think it's on the roadmap now uh, with a multi tool that you will to come. So that's that's something that we were missing before that distortion damage has actually a valid counter. So um, you are not only a sitting duck uh, when you get fully distorted by by someone else, uh, you will be able to drain that. So you will be able to uh, make your ship work again. But I think the, the biggest change that will come uh, with uh, 4.0 is uh, the change to soft death. Um, I don't know if 
uh, all of you already played the Arena Commander experimental mode, but that already gives a hint at uh, what we are aiming for. So right now, also in 3.23 uh, live, or so in 3.23.1 live, um, if you shoot a ship, if the ship reaches health zero, it will explode or it will go into the soft date state. Um, but um, yeah, we are right now actively discussing how we want to change that. So we have already some ideas. Uh, so uh, one of the big ideas is tied actually to the health or the the, yeah, the life of the uh, power plant and um, yeah, give give also players a, a way to yeah maybe fix or escape the soft death scenario there um but uh this is this is as said still an active discussion but the goal is to have it come with uh everything resource network related for yeah. and, and of course uh we talked about this in isc but the the experimental modes for uh this season in arena commander have to do with you know tuning time to kill and stuff on a lot of these ships yeah correct yes yeah, it's it's a huge effort right now that we are going through, which is like, I don't know if <laughs> yeah, we had heavy iterations time, especially in the beginning of uh, the 3.23 cycle, where we had it wrong, had it wrong, had it even more wrong. And then at some point we were heading into a direction we were seeing suddenly uh, the uh, time to kill times being in the in the ballpark area of where we want to see them we are still not fully there yet so we are still uh, improving it um, especially um, like it gets really complicated because some ships are in some ships it's easier to to destroy crucial components versus others but uh, yeah we, we we are working on a solution for that okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I got somebody in chat, uh, Suburbanite1001 says, I've lost all excitement for this game just about a decade ago. But he's still here. It's a different game. Th thanks, thanks for hanging in there, Suburbanite. Oh my th just... god. <laughs> Don't read haters' comments. Don't read haters' comments. <laughs> um... More, more okay. Here, so here's a question, uh, Elliot. Uh, would you please make a clear distinction between vehicle-based <laughs> combat missions and FPS ones? Is this uh, is that something we even want to do? Do we want to mix them up? Do we? That, <laughs> they're asking for it. I can't believe you read my comment like that. <laughs> Hi, Dan. How are you doing? No. Can I say hi to Dan? Bye bye. No, I'm joking. Uh, it's, we, we're going to add, in the future when we, you know, redo the contract manager app, we're going to add a sort of section where you can see the sort of gameplay <laughs> you're going to encounter. So it's would say things like, you know, maybe you need a multi-tool, maybe you're going to come up against, uh, maybe you're going to need like FPS weapons, maybe you're going to need a, a, like a powerful ship. There'll be like a, a section where you can see what it is. And the reason that we don't currently make a distinction between the two is because the idea is that in the future, like your bounty that you're hunting might be above like a bunker but then he might land and go inside and then you've got to infiltrate and fight them there's there's a wait what bar citizen wait wait which bar citizen damn you need to rest a whole bunch of different things that we want to happen Info so therefore we don't want to make a, a clear distinction um when there might be no where, why there might be none you know you might yeah. get there start attacking them and then they get in their ship and take off and you've got to transition from ground to space but you know what you should do then you need to start telling um your boss be like yo we really 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 need to go to dreamhack and twitchcon and pax and just have a, a star citizen booth and, and promote our game and, and you have to fly me there to say hi to everyone and to promote the game. Always at TwitchCon, they have like this, they have computers and people test the game. You guys need to start putting boots. Oh, that was literally all we did today was figure out where we were going. Go to TwitchCon. If you go to TwitchCon, I will go. Because I'm like, oh, is TwitchCon worth it? I don't know. Um... 
you should go to DreamHack. I mean, DreamHack is next week, so probably you guys are not going to DreamHack. Uh, but TwitchCon is a must, I think, and it doesn't collide with SitCon anymore. So you can't go. It's uh, three days or two days. It's it's three days. Yeah, it's from Friday to Sunday. So you guys should have like you like a small like booth with some computers and give like information like hey here's a here's a card you can redeem and blah blah if you make an account and then you add my referral code in those cards you add Gabby's referral code and like you promote the game and then everyone at TwitchCon joins with my referral code. <laughs> Crazy in Excel budget. <laughs> Honestly, there was a game um, that they were they were promoting. I think um, because I didn't see a lot of stuff in last year's TwitchCon because uh, I only went one day. Um, but when I went in 2018, uh, I remember they have like so many games that only had like two computers. They only had like two or three computers and oh my god, like the promotion of that game, everyone was just waiting in line to try the game. And they were like, oh yeah, and they were giving like flyers with information about the game and, and everyone was like super nice. And you need to do that. Base combat, you know, there's... Yeah. <laughs> too clear change. We don't want to make too clear a distinction. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like you, you, I, I like what you're saying. It's like we could we could give you expectation. Gabby is trying to make you work harder. Honestly, I have so many ideas. I have so many ideas that I I think I think I will be like a super nice assistant for them. Like I will be a ten out of ten assistant with a bunch of ideas and blah blah blah. But. Uh, I, I already have enough content to work on to 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 get another job. <laughs> the mission giver expects it to be primarily this or primarily that. But yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's important to leave room for for the element of surprise, not just from the, the, the story of, 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 of your mission team and the narrative and stuff, but the surprises of the other backers, the other players in the version. Exactly. It, ta it takes like influence from real life. You know, you take a job and they're like, hey, you're, this is what you're applying for. You're only going to do this. And 90% of the time you'd start and you're like, they give you so much other shit to do at the same time. So, so no, I, I think that's good. I think, I think that's a reasonable uh, expectation. And, and I think it'll help people a lot. You know, uh, we ex Yo, Dan, <laughs> I keep pausing this. <laughs> um, there, there's a um, dream hack. Dream hack Dallas is in five days. Oh my god, I need to do more laundry. <laughs> uh, it's uh, ah, uh, I need to do so much stuff. Um, you should like. There's a bar citizen. Um, that we are. Well, I didn't organize it. There was a guy who organized it, and a few people who are going to dream hacks are going to bar citizen. Maybe you can bring like someone from the CIG Austin studio to to DreamHack Dallas Bar Citizen. <laughs> you got all your outfits ready. I don't know what I'm gonna wear. <gasps> Expect it to be primarily this. Yes, yes, yes. You bring people, bring people. Yes. Say it's for work. But <laughs> the verse is the verse. Um, and no hand holding. No handholding. In big no hand Um Why nerf a call to arms payout when it was already so meager? Which which mission is called to arms? What am I? Um, I, I we're never gonna end watching this. Yo, uh, Dan were at the after party in the CIG after party, the VIP one at Sitcon. He wore like this amazing red jacket with like. With like sparklies and everything, he looks so fair. I need to print that photo. It's internally, it's called Sandbox Criminal Kills. It's the one that just gives you money for killing people with crime stats. I right, have right, it right. here. Uh, yeah, yeah, players seem to always just want money. Um, <gasps> so uh, I know, right? We are reactive. Um, we try to be reactive with missions. So we we look at them and we see if they're earning too much and the you know earning way too much than we like. We you know take it back a bit um 
But now we have the economy team, they're actually helping with this. So for the they've actually rebalanced this again. So hopefully for the next patch, you'll see a change in the call to arms uh, payment because before call to arms was literally balanced by the mission team. Um, and balancing UEC for our economy, obviously... I found the photo. I was kind of... I was kind of tipsy here. <laughs> um, can you see it? Your phone? We're so white. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't focus correctly. <laughs> I already told Silo what I'm wearing on the show floor for Sitcom this year. <gasps> and he's fully on board. Oh my god. I'm debating if I'm going. I FOMO hit. FOMO hit. And I'm like, should I make a Dono go to... To go to Sitcom, Manchester, I guess. The reason we have a dedicated team is because it's so big. Uh, like a funny example, kind of funny. You One are One of the going? big reasons that we no, had Gabby, to wipe no. UEC is because of uh, <laughs> my team. Uh, and I'll Como. take sole blame because I submitted it. Um, I accidentally managed to make it so that people had earned 4 billion UEC just from salvage missions. <laughs> um, and the economy team, when they found out, wasn't very happy with me. But that's because... Numbers are absolutely insanity to try and balance, so. Uh, uh, fiercely, several people in chat are like, did you just ask what is call to arms? Uh, yeah, sometimes when I'm on live internet and there's a bunch of lights and constantly running five different calculations on how not to say the wrong thing because people will take it to Reddit. Some Why keep it hidden? At least for content creators, you know? We signed an NDA. Sometimes I <laughs> say the wrong thing and I forget what a thing is called. It happens. Thanks for worrying about me, though. There will be no FOMO. Uh, <laughs> Are you doing a Jedi mind trick? All right, Yogi. No FOMO. No FOMO. You knew this was coming. How's Master Modes going and what happens next? Will there be changes? Oh, changes. Yes, of course. Um, I mean, the um, how how is it doing right now? It's it's better than we, what we had in live on three two three three two two before. Um, in terms of like, Dan just came to work more. He he's here in chat just to just to force us to go to sitcom. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm done with meetings. Time to force everyone in Gabby's chat to go to Manchester. Let's go. <laughs> how successful Gabby, we're going? change was so far i think it's pretty positive um we i mean i can't i can't exactly um say exact numbers but the relationships of kill death ratios on all ships for example they have flattened, flattened out a lot a lot a lot of the times in the past we always had one or two ships which basically were responsible for most of the kills in the game and 2023 sitcom was for babies <laughs> that's not the case anymore um, we also have more players uh, with, uh, let's say, more diverse uh, levels of um, flying and combat skills enjoying the game more. So I would count that as a win. But there is a huge amount of stuff that is on our list to to do. Um, there's like typical examples like ESP needs to be needs to be uh, needs to be improved. Um, the one v one v one dogfighting needs to be improved. Um, there's also a couple of things we want to try out with the flight model, like uh, using an X-shaped velocity space to uh, combat the. Should we, should we go to Sitcon chat? Time one, type one in chat if we should go. Type two if we shouldn't. X strafing problem. That, that, whether that works or not, we'll we'll see. There is. Um, <laughs> In general, we want to improve the combat distances a bit. Um, there will be more stuff happening with the uh, 4.0 tuning patch concerning <laughs> weapon speeds that also might help with the distances. Um, and there's a couple of bugs like the, the camera shaking sometimes is inconsistent, the uh, G4 zoom effects are sometimes inconsistent. Um, and of course, there are like a couple of uh, ships that feel out of whack. The, uh, one of the Hornets can at the moment pull uh, 35 Gs upwards. That is, of course, not intended. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's lots of stuff. Um, but as I said, like it's like overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with the current progress. Uh, is it the final state? Of course not. Um, but there will be more stuff uh, happening, especially with the uh, with the resource network that will come towards. Because of course, these new feature sets also require some changes in the in the uh, in, in the flight model or the way we. I don't we know, Chad. I see a lot of ships. ones. How about you, Rich? Yeah, I said you know I can echo you know kind of Yogi's comments that you know we're personally really happy with how it's gone. Um, it's definitely there's definitely going to be more changes. Um, a big challenge for Masterwords for us in um, in um, in terms of release was just how much around Masterwords changed. So it wasn't just adding Masterwords to the game. This was fundamentally you know making some big changes to the aiming system and the you know kind of flight model itself as well. So we had a lot of changes going in that went just to master modes. So this was quite hard to manage. Um, you know, I just feel guilty because I feel I feel like I, if I did a donagle for like to go to Sitcom, I, I think it, like I will reach it. Um, but I feel bad for my community that cannot go, you know? Um, I feel guilty going without my community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You will represent... I forgive you now to Donegal. I need to see how much it will be like the cost of staying. And I didn't even did they sell the gala tickets yet? I didn't even I have I didn't buy a ticket, so everything sold out, no? Or at, at least the VIP tickets sold out. So it's it's not worth it to go with a general ticket, I think. But that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun in games working on this is, you know, we're always trying to improve things, always trying to change things for the better. Um, and, you know, we're going to carry on listening to the feedback from the players, um, you know, and also looking at the data as well. Well, I was telling people like, yo, if we fly to, I don't know, if may, we maybe fly to New York or something, it's probably cheaper to go there. I don't know, like fly somewhere like to the east and maybe it's cheaper to fly to Manchester, I don't know. And rent a castle? I mean, we could all rent a castle, probably. If we split between, like, everyone going to Sitcon, it's probably not gonna be not that expensive. <laughs> hmm... you know because that's 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 a big part for us is we need to back up what you know we basically need to be accountable for what we're doing so you know any changes we make they have, we've got to, be able to prove them that they're actually having an impact in the game well i wouldn't do that tournament this time i wouldn't do a tournament uh i'm gonna say i did a tournament because i didn't experience the sitcom like real experience um so i wouldn't do a tournament Obviously, uh, especially if it's in Manchester, like I prefer just being like free. Like if I want to go, if I want to have breakfast with my community, like I will arrive a bit late to sitcom um, or if I want to just visit somewhere or blah, blah. I, I want to have like the freedom of just not having to be somewhere um, and not like because I made that compromise. I, I wouldn't do a tournament this time game that you know that we intended um so that's gonna be a big part of moving forward with the uh, general balance but yeah there's gonna be lots more you know th there's gonna be lo there's gonna be lots more changes we're gonna fix up some of the ships because we definitely missed um some of the ships you know for various reasons you know we changed a lot of ships and the you want me to live stream the whole event i don't even know how what hotspot well maybe willie can help me but how do I get a hotspot? Or, like, do, does any hotspot work in there? I need to find, like, what kind of internet I can stream with in the UK. It's 
sponsor all of Snake, that would be pretty expensive. Ships that inherit certain records from other ships, sometimes that can catch us out a little bit. 5G. Um, but, you know, we're basically working on identifying those ships, which we um, are in the process of doing, and we'll fix those up. Willy, can you not cancel whatever trip you have? I mean, <laughs> let us all, all stay with you. Um, and then we'll move to where, where, where we basically... Mod Squad don't know? Oh my god. That... That will be... I don't, I don't know. I need to make calculations. To you know, another round of big changes to the balance as well. 10k, that is... Um, so yeah, no. so like any other no. feature, I mean... It, it, <laughs> Obviously, since the since the PU uh, first you will donate that... for mods to go. I mean, maybe <sighs> chat. <laughs> I already decided not to go. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> um, I don't know. I will think about it up in 2.0 back in november december 2015 uh we're now in 2024 uh obviously every there's, there's not a single thing that's gone in that hasn't changed that hasn't evolved that hasn't continued to iterate uh since its first release master modes is if you have any contacts at cig i recommend contacting them especially since extra security will most likely be needed they might be willing to help <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> I will probably. I will probably hire my own security. I have a friend uh, that is like, he has won boxing tournaments uh, in the uh, in the UK. I I will probably hire him if I go. To be honest, <laughs> it's no different. Uh, it will continue to evolve. It continue to iterate. It'll continue to. Uh, they'll continue to look at your feedback and process your feedback and apply where they think it's necessary and relevant and proper. Um, and of course, fixing all the bugs and stuff like that. Speaking of bugs, chat has been asking about the dupe bug. Uh, uh, yes, the I'll dupe bug you. is super duper annoying. Um, all I can tell you right now, because I'm sitting here live doing a show and I'm not plugged into everything else at the moment, is that we have a fix internally. It's working on internal builds uh, and that that fix will go out in a point patch. Uh, I don't know if it'll be 0.3 or it'll be a 0.2B or whatever. Like the, the, they're still working that out, how that's going to be distributed. Uh, but we have a fix. Uh, it's working internally and it will go out uh, as soon as everything aligns to allow it to work out as far as anything else around that uh, i know there's a bunch of subsequent questions i don't have the answers for those ones so hang tight it's coming um looking at these questions here racing they might tax you without representation what do you mean <clears throat> does racing have any future that's what the question. <laughs> no. Uh, I would say yes. Um, of course. Yeah. No. Yeah. Of course, of course, it has a future. Well, sure. There's like, I mean, we gotta sound master. more confident, guys. Come on. No, yeah, okay, racing's fine. got a yes. future. Racing, racing. Racing. Wow. Racing hold, hold, has a future. Hold, hold, so, hold. Um, but but really, it's about oh. I mean, like the master mode tuning patch. Um, of course, affected the current racing tracks that there are, right? Like the speeds got a lot slower and so on. And so some of the tracks we have right now, they might not work as they do now. Um, but the level design team, for example, they also asked, hey, should we ch adapt the racing tracks now? And we were like, let's, let's, we're not completely done with our master mode change or with the flight uh, model development. So maybe hold off for like doing extensive changes for a while. Um, but racing, like, I mean, we're still racing ships. So of course we invested into racing. Um, Actually, one of the um, specifically for the racing from the racing community, we added something to the flight model back then uh, that uh, was addressing the lack of certain acceleration when you're not using digital input devices and so on. Right. So, um, yes, racing, racing is important and will we're not. Oh, Jesus. What the hell? Uh, so racing is really important to us. Um, and actually, today I got a question from from uh, from Knebel, who is one of the uh, German uh, Oh God, podcasters, YouTube streamers actually don't know. He asked if we could add smoke pots to races, uh, to racing ships. 
I have not discussed it with anyone, but I think the idea is really, really great. Um, just putting this out there. Hmm. Rich, say more about racing. Oh, definitely got a future, you know, because I've, well, I come from a racing background, you know, I did, I've done a lot of sim racing and I'm a big fan of racing in real life. So, you know, and that's the key thing with Masterwords is it's allowing us, it's going to allow us in the future to kind of give more freedom to allow the racing variants to excel at racing. And that's something we're really keen for. Because one of the issues we've had in the past is... That was wild timing, and that banner came up at the same time and moved the screen around, right? As Yogi went, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> Perfectly timed. It's, it's balancing the combat experience with the flight experience and the racing experience. Um, and if, if you have a really good racing ship that can use all its guns at the same time and everything, it can suddenly be the dominant force in combat, which is... Po racing is so fun. I wonder, like... Mm -mm. I wonder how it could bring more community to, like, racing. Because racing has, like... The racing community is, like... Really big. But at the same time, I feel like they are not as known... As other communities, you know? But, like, the, ra the racing community do a lot of, like, tournaments and, and events together. But somehow that is not... Like, people don't really find out about that unless you have a contact in the racing community. So I'm wondering how it will be possible to bring more people into racing because it's so fun. And imagine having, like, like pot racing, uh, like... Like races, that would be so fun. Probably not intentional. So we're looking at ways where we can balance that. So we can have racing ships for like the best handling ships or the fastest in the straight line. And then basically, you know, as Yogi said, it's about the um, it's about the tracks as well. You know, because the tracks are where mm -hmm. you're racing. So it's important. That it's it's important that they're designed around the current flight model. You know, and as we've made a lot of changes, we need to now take a step back and look at what tracks are going to make yeah, the most out of the handling that we now have in the game. Gotcha. Um, Starbucksy in chat says, Jared, is this live? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, no I, I, I think it's always good to remind people racing is super important. There's a lot of folks here. I know, I know Rich, you, uh, you, had, you had a question whether you could even make this show because you were, you were going to head off to a race this weekend and stuff and you didn't know if you could be here and stuff. I mean, so many people on the vehicle team uh, and just development in general are so big into racing and stuff. It's, it's yes, it, I think it's very close to a, to a lot of our hearts. Um, just to sum back up, you know, the, you know there, there's, we got to figure out the master mode stuff before we spend a whole lot of time doing it, but I don't think... Yeah, I agree with that, EDC. I agree with that. They shouldn't count just one. Um, they should count like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. They they should count like in general, at least like three laps or I don't. I don't. I would not bet on 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 on. I don't know what was I was I trying to say. I would just bet that there's enough people here who like racing and enjoy racing and love racing that. It's time in the when the, uh, the development sun when the de development eye of Sauron that it'll get mm -hmm. love and attention. I still personally, just speaking for myself, and Yogi, you might know where I'm going with this. I still hope for a racing master mode personally. Well, I think the easiest. I, I wouldn't go for racing master mode because uh, racing. If you want to go quickly from A to B, this is what navigation mode is for, right? But we should could should absolutely do something like a racing operator mode where the head up display clears with racing specific information. We actually have a stopwatch on the on the on the HUD. Uh, I'm not sure if players know about this, um, but for, this is, for example, something that we should then just on, have on by default or having a bigger, I don't know, like a, a bigger TVI and uh, giving you expected deceleration time. Oh my God, yes, I need a bigger TVI, please. And uh, a bigger pip, I am blind. My glasses don't help me. I'm uh, direct interview <laughs> and, and and stuff like that. That's stuff that's important for the racing experience itself. Well, that's why I'm not a designer or a programmer. 
There's um what I like. On on the mission side for racing. Also, real quick, I'd like to point out Rich is being incredibly modest. Rich, aren't you like a champion eye racer? Like it was, I, a, it, it was a long, long time ago. I can't remember anymore. I there you go. Yeah. <laughs> champion eye racer. So there you go. Um for missions. Um we in the PU it, it can be a bit difficult to do racing missions. The magnification for PvP is too confusing. It, it doesn't it doesn't really work if you're against a competitive player. Compared to AC, because we have the the respawn flow set out for us, so it can take Hi, you Chris. quite a long time to get back to the racetrack where you How are you? you know want to do your races. So we're investigating ways we can speed that up. Uh, I don't want to speak to any sp specifics because they might change. Uh, one thing we are doing is uh, we're going to be adding open track versions of the current racing missions that we have. Um, because currently how you unlock the next racetrack is via completing the first one. So what we're going to do is just give out a, you don't get a reward, you don't pay a buy-in, here's access to the track. We'll time you like we do in the mission as it is, but, um, you know, it's just so you can keep practicing. Um, and then going forward, you know, we'll have more advanced races, but races aren't just in ships, you know, they're, they're in ground vehicles. Uh, we have the Daymar rally, um, that the community do and that's that's a lot of fun but they can also extend to on foot races um and recently we prototyped a a race a time trial race in the escape route of the prison where we time players who could get out the fastest and then award them uh like merits for whoever got out the fastest um <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> um but um we we didn't we didn't feel like it fully fit so we've just kind of like we can do it and you know maybe in the future you'll see it um somewhere in the game but um yeah it was a lot of fun um because we, we tried to be sort of suggestive with the direction so if you didn't know the escape route um you you could really mess your time up i do well you mentioned the damar rally i think that's, that's that's as good a transition as any to 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 one of rich's favorite topics ground vehicles you ready rich Always, I love ground vehicles. Why do the tanks suck? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is one of the problems with changing so much. Is we got caught out by a change um, on the back end of the game, and this had a negative impact on the tank handling, and we just couldn't quite get it fixed in time for the release. Um, it's, it was quite a complicated problem. Um, quite, it's quite an interesting problem as well. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the details, um, <laughs> but I can confirm it is now fixed and the tank is now tank. Well, both tanks are driving like tanks again, um, which is really good. The tanks, so, the tanks are fixed internally, not publicly. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, we've discovered the error, we've fixed it. Um, it's gone into our builds, um, and that'll make its way out there. All right. Uh, so what's with all the other wheeled vehicles that are sliding and sometimes bouncing around all the time? My, my poor gameplay guys were trying to film the, the Urza Medivac for ISC and they're like, is it supposed to have like hydraulic bounce? Yeah, unfortunately that was another change that, but that wasn't really caught in time to fix, but it has, you know, it's also been fixed. So, um, so basically the vehicle you saw as a, as a player was actually the server vehicle and not the actual player vehicle of the player physics. Um, so it caused a lot of glitching, um, but we've corrected that. And the ground vehicles are now back to being fairly stable ground vehicles. Um, and it's fair to say, you know, we're still looking at, in, you know, in, like, it, like improving the general ground vehicle experience to make it as good as ships, because it should be, you know? The all vehicles in the game and all vehicles should be up to the same standard. So we're still, you know, we're definitely looking at improving the ground vehicle experience still. Um, but we're pretty happy with the, you know, kind of major physics overhaul that went through with it. We just need to make it a little bit more game friendly, um, you know, for our environments, you know, which are massive planets with loads of different terrains. Um, I, get, I get you. Uh, uh, loading in chat says, Jared, I beg you, do you have any plans for the cluttered UI problem? Uh, these aren't the UI guys uh, loading, but yes. Uh, we was witnessing a, a big chat with uh, Simon and Bone and, 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 and CR uh, just yesterday in, in our big creative and technical directors chat and stuff. It's, we're, we're aware. Uh, it's, it's been a forever thing. So uh, I have no information to give you. That was just them talking about potential solutions yesterday, so I don't know where they're going with it. Uh, but yes, but these aren't the guys. And I just 
Uh, what happened to grab libs recently? Uh, this question says that, that they've fallen into a bad state that they had previously uh, before their last rework where sometimes they just decide to stop hovering, fall down, and explode. This one, I'm, we're not quite sure. It's actually, we, so we got reports about this like midweek and we started to do our own investigations um, across different teams to figure out what's going on. Because we've changed some of the stuff in the handling, but the backend technology hasn't changed. But again, with a game like Stasis and the fundamental game engine is updating all the time and there can be kind of negative consequences on completely different features because it might use a piece of some of the game part which works the same way, which now works a different way. And that could have an impact. So it's about figuring out where it's gone wrong mm. um, because we're, de you know, we're definitely not happy with the overall kind of graph of experience and we're definitely looking at improving it. Um, you know, because that's another key part of racing as well. Because the gravel of racing can actually be really cool. You know, when it f works really well, it's it's probably one of the cooler race experiences in the game. So we're definitely looking at, you know, what's gone wrong in you know three twenty three for gravel of. Yeah, uh, the chat's talking about how basically sometimes it flips over and you hit your head on the ground and falls down and stuff. So it's I mean, like I, like I said, we're looking into it. It could be everything from a networking issue to anything else. Um, uh, I imagine. I imagine when uh, when we find something more, we'll we'll communicate it. Um, that said, I like this next question. Um, Star Citizen is a lot of things. It's PvP. It's PVE. It's 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 FPS. It's spaceships. It's stuff like that. Um, it's sandbox. It's now it's you know chain missions and stuff coming stuff like this. Um, Ground vehicles can sometimes seem like an afterthought, or or, or just like an also ran. Uh, so this question simply says, "What are you What are you doing to encourage ground vehicle usage? Uh, are there any new specific any specific new mission types for this? Maybe." Um, so there's been lots of discussions about ground vehicles in our game and how we use them on the mission side. the The main thing we face is that when we balance. Like when we balance a mission and balance the economy, time is a huge factor in it. Um, and if you can do it in a ground vehicle, you can do it in a ship a hell of a lot faster. So it becomes this thing where we try to make an experience around ground vehicles, but then people just do it quicker in a ship. So then we have to lower the price to not break the economy. And then... Oh, I feel like... I feel, I feel like there should be a boundary... Boundary... Yeah, boundary. Uh, around like bunker missions and stuff like that if you want to go to a place you kind of need to land far away and then take your ground vehicle like to reach that place i feel like that will fix all the issues just like uh add an invisible boundary like in howard's legacy how i'm playing right now is that you cannot fly to all the places it doesn't it, it's like oh you cannot fly to this place so if you add like an invisible wall, I feel like more people will start using the ground vehicles, you know? And people just stop doing the mission. Um, we we want to add a benefit. We want to add a reason for people to actually use ground vehicles. Um, recently, like in the dis distribution centers, there's there's massive like gas spheres um, and uh, the ground turrets will shoot at spaceships, but they won't shoot at ground vehicles. So we, we've seen some players using the uh, tonks to to destroy them uh, so that they don't have as much resistance. Um, but we also like, we, we, we need some like tools or features that help us encourage it. Uh they gave, they gave the turrets at outspots insane aim. Yeah, but people can still uh, shoot them down if you're good, I guess. Um, you know, or if you have like a really tanky ship, you can easily shoot them down. Before they explode your ship, a recent uh, a recent thing that we was investigating for ground vehicles was to do mm -hmm. with the the copions that just uh, got added to the game. Was we was having a a debate about how we discover them, how the player discovers them, and one of the sort of discussions that we came upon was that maybe the ground vehicle radar would be the only thing that could find these copions so that if you wanted to do the mission, you'd have to land, land take your ground vehicle out and use that to try and locate the copions. The but storms are we wasn't really cool. happy with that, so we've kind of uh, thrown it out. 
uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're always looking for new ways. Um, <laughs> just give, just give the turrets uh, size fifteen torps and, and problem solved. Can encourage it, and me and Thorsten have been talking about ways that we could do it. So I'll hand over to Thorsten because I'm sure he's. I some. actually wanted to, to to say like yeah, there's there are some things that we already started discussing, and that is I think one of the most important parts is that environment matter. Right. So depending on what en environment the mission takes place and it might be worth bringing your your ship or your ground vehicle or even going by foot. So, for example, uh, we, we already have the case where you have to enter a cave and you cannot fly in some where you can fly in. We have some where a ground vehicle also fits in. But in general, if you have a cave mission, you, the, the the way to go into that cave is by by foot, but uh, we want to expand on that in the future, and we will only we don't only want to expand on that by the how the environment looks. So, for example, uh, a vast forest you cannot land with your ship, but you can drive into it with with uh, your ground vehicle. But we also want to utilize uh, the um, weather conditions, for example, right? So, a strong wind, for example, will. Um, block your ship from actually landing safely. So it's better to be outside of that strong wind area and drop the, the ground vehicle and then avoid uh, the, the strong wind by, by driving in with your ground vehicle. Or uh, with Pyro, you might have already seen it in the uh, CitizenCon uh, demos with the solar flare. When, when your ship gets hit by a solar flare, it's basic, it basically drops down because it's uh, turned off. So this is also like the dropping <laughs> from the sky is something that you would avoid when you would have come with a, with a ground vehicle in that situation. But there are also other things that are related to the weather, like limited sight. It's better or it's safer to go with a ground vehicle versus a, a spaceship and stuff like that. So there are plenty of um, you know, scenarios that we are currently investigating what we can do to actually make uh, ground vehicles uh, more like usable or like even required for, for, for missions. Cool. All right. We've got about five minutes left in the show. We might go a few minutes over because I, I want to talk about our last topic here, engineering. Um, obviously engineering, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's rightfully excited for 4.0 pyro and, and all that stuff. And you, and you should be for me, we've been talking about engineering so long. You, you know, my feelings on engineering, I, that's where yeah, the birth Bajan, of multi-crew cool. stuff comes from. So that's my big thing. Uh, before we get to these questions, let's revisit the scope. What should people expect from engineering in 4.0? So as of now, for 4.0, let's start with life support. So we will have life support that uh, has uh, the fire system in it. So uh, life support is uh, also a valid counter for fire that you will uh, see on your ships. Uh, we will have room propagation, so um, you opening a door to the outside will basically evacuate all the atmosphere of your ship to the outside. We have atmosphere maintenance, where uh, you as the player are responsible for um, making sure that your life support generator runs uh, well enough so that uh, there's enough breathable uh, atmosphere inside the rooms. And uh, yeah, it's already said, so the life support generator is a new item that we will introduce and uh, the life support generator then will redo, create a new resource that is the, so, so right now it's still called life support resource. Like we are really, really creative with names. Um, <laughs> there's a filter uh, that is also a new item that is uh, added uh, as, as the, the cost consumable for the life support generator and yeah that's that's just the life support segment of the resource network release um, talking about engineering uh, here we have uh, the power management that will be introduced you were not able to see it yet in the arena commander mode uh, because we were not ready yet so uh, especially ui um, is still a lot of work on us uh, that we need to, because we need to get it right. It needs to be accessible. It cannot be like this high scientific uh, method of you basically measuring the joules that the power plant. No, we, we have to make it accessible for the general play audience, but still interesting for those that are really interested in, in those uh, engineering mechanics. Um, then uh, we will introduce the relays 
uh, as the connection point between the items with the fuses. So these are already things that you even see in life in some of the ships that are already prepared. So for example, the retaliator already has the relay boxes with the fuses inside. And in the uh, arena commander experimental mode, you can actually uh, witness their functionality. A huge thing for, for it is, uh, so that's more on our side, so on the design side, is the rebalance of items again. So, but um, we, we, as already mentioned, um, we have now, with all the pre-work that has been done for 323, we have a very, very clear goal of what we want to achieve here. And that is we want to really facilitate like the items inside a resource network. So items should be more meaningful in ships. So we have a meaningful difference between item classes, for example, where there's a huge difference uh, on the f look and feel in, in terms of gameplay for the civilian and military components, as well as the grades. So this is this is our internal high goal for the release that we we have a meaningful difference there, so that players' choice actually matters here. And uh, also, what we want to achieve here is that it's clearer the differences, so players understand what's the difference between a civilian and an industrial item more easily, and it's it's very clear to players what to pick for for the for the, the journey they want to take. Um, something that, uh, yeah, sadly I had a discussion yesterday, will not make it for 4.0. Uh, uh, so as of now is uh, the batteries. So we might push uh, the batteries to a later release. Doesn't mean that they won't come. It just means they come at a later point because we want to, like this is like, it, it's such a crucial feature and we need to get it right. And every time that we can spend on polish, is better invested than actually forcing additional features in. So we rather would like to spend time in polishing the feature and then just making sure that everything is in. I think no one would like that, that everything is in there and it's not working uh, or it's not working well enough. That's that's the best safe I, I, phrasing I could come up with. I hear you and I appreciate you sharing us, sharing that with us. Obviously, uh, when ISC comes back uh, in about a month, um, one of the stories we'll be telling on our journey to 4.0 will be another revisiting of engineering and life support and stuff like that. And you'll get to see how it's all, you know, working laid out there. So, um, Should I continue? Because I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's more. There's more that, uh, and that is a simple repair. So we have uh, the repair Hello. of ship items that you also can already witness in the arena commander experimental mode, exchange of fuses, um, exchange of broken items. And uh, uh, we mentioned that at the beginning of this uh, show that there's a, now a distortion counter and that basically leads to the last bit that we, we will introduce with, uh, <laughs> with the resource network engineering gameplay, which is malfunctions. So here we will start with uh, three malfunctions. So the initial release will come with those three, which is uh, a fire, uh, damage to the item and distortion to the item, because we now have dedicated counters to them so that we can actually introduce meaningful gameplay and you're not like just suffering from whatever malfunction the, the uh, item will suffer from. Um, but we made sure that the malfunction system is so vast that if we notice that those three are not enough yet, that in the later patch or in later releases, we can add more uh, bespoke malfunctions so we can slowly widen, widen the gameplay. Because I can tell you, it's already quite a lot that you have to manage and learn. So it, it, it will be fun, but it will be also a huge learning curve that uh, some of us have to go through. Oh, oh, cool. That no, sounds great. I would like it known that through all these episodes this year and the previous years, um, I, I, I saw some folks uh, giving me credit for asking hard questions or whatever. These people are willing to show up every week and they're willing to take the hard questions and my dumb uh, bullshit like I just did. <laughs> and I, It's my day off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, I was about to say like, uh, don't people have like the weekend off? Uh, and then I was also about to say, 
Uh, oh my god, like, so much respect for the developers. Because, I mean, I guess if you're passionate about something and if you're constantly working on a project, it's kind of easy to talk about it. But they talk about so much stuff every single week, trying to explain to people, like, everything they do. That is, like, that is crazy. And there's so much respect for them. So it's just, it's just you, I, I, whatever praise you guys ever, ever, ever give to me, I pass it on through to the developers who appear on ISC and SEL. Uh, especially, this person was a great example of that. Where it's like, no, no, I got more I want to share. And it's like, man, I love that shit. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, and yeah, uh, this, is, this is my med pen. I tried to stow it, but it keeps reappearing in my hand. It's an old bug. Boston. <laughs> Uh, that's it, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching our Invictus All Vehicles gameplay uh, uh, SCL. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, tr uh, look at uh, yesterday's ISC where we revealed the uh, the brand new Iron Chad from uh, Drake Interplanetary and got a look inside the current gray box progress of the RSI Polaris. Uh, they're both really, really, really cool looking, and I'm really excited to get both of them in the game as soon as possible. Uh, we're on hiatus. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take a few weeks off uh, from from uh, ISC, a uh, few weeks off of uh, publishing. We'll we'll be filming and recording and creating all the great stories for 4.0. We don't get any time off, uh, and I and SEO will take next week off because I have a doctor's appointment on the same day. Yeah, health's important, but we'll be back with SEO in two weeks. Um, until then, uh, thank you again to Torsten, they to Elliot, for to uh, Rich, to Yogi, and of course to everybody who always appears on these shows. Uh, like I said, can't do it without you. I think we're going to do a Not raid really thing. Willy. Probably do a raid thing. That's so cute. You know, that do the raid thing. So community folks, if you're watching, you can start the raid thing. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I really like my job. And you guys make it possible. So Aww. thank you for that. Um, uh, and yeah, this cool med pen also. I got, he I got, has I got a, a good one. job. Oh, he's good at okay. it. He's good. And yes, a chat was right. Why am I holding it? Because I look at Twitch chat and I need it to recover from the damage. Till next time, everybody. Bye. He has like a dream job, but he's really good at, good at it, which like he deserves it 100%.